Welcome to For the Hour. This evening, joining me is the political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots, Deputy Chief Secretary Watson Solomon Dude. We're going to have an exclusive one on one conversation this evening. It's past due. We've been trying to have this conversation for some weeks now, but finally, we've gotten the Deputy Chief Secretary to join us here on For the Hour for what promises to be an exciting, informative, discussion with our Deputy Chief Secretary in the Tobago House of Assembly and leader of the political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots. Good evening, Deputy Chief Secretary. Good evening, Glendora, and good evening, Tobago. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been a while. Yes, we haven't spoken in a long time. I am very, very happy that you're joining me for the hour. Um, when we initially decided to try and have this conversation, it was well before the Trinidad launch yes, and all of those things. You've certainly. been super, super busy since. So before we get into all of that, how are you doing just as a person, as a man? You've been going, going, going since the THA elections. Have you gotten a chance to just stop and relax, take it all in? No, no chance to stop and relax. But I think it's good mm -hmm. because, you know, when you keep in constant motion, you don't develop more. You don't develop that thing called acrimony and bitterness and negativity. You have to be so focused mm -hmm. because a minute lost is a minute that will never be regained. So you have to just keep going at it. It's well worth it. All right. Well, I mean, tonight we want to explore things like your overall vision, um, your leadership, your role as the Deputy Chief Secretary, because whereas you've been very busy mm -hmm. in Trinidad as political leader of the PDP, um, us here in Tobago are uh, quite curious about the, the office of the De Deputy Chief Secretary yeah. and how that is going to build out and the Dubai plans and all of that. Um, but let me ask you this scene that we're fresh off the launch in Trinidad. And I don't want to go through too much because Tobago updates covered that extensively yeah, you know, yesterday. Yeah. You know <laughs> you what I mean? Recap, yes, 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 everybody knows what happened in Trinidad yesterday. <laughs> definitely, definitely, uh, we covered that. If you did not see that, just go on Tobago updates um, page or website and you will get everything from the launch uh, yesterday. But I want to ask you something. As you are in this political momentum, you, you said that you haven't had a chance to no. rest yet. Okay, Have so. you had a chance to take in the fact that you have created history, significant history in Trinidad and Tobago, becoming the, the, the party, the, the political leader of the party to take 14 seats in the Tobago House of Assembly election, given that the, the, the PNM, the People's National Movement, the, the uh, Tobago Council, they were there for how many years? You've had, I think, two previous iterations of a minority or opposition to the PNM, and you came from wherever you came from, and you unseated the PNM, you forced other people who thought that you couldn't do it to actually join you. Have you really taken in what that means? No, and I'm glad I have not taken it in. I do not want to get swell-headed. Okay, <laughs> so all I'm right. Glad I have not taken it in. Um, I see my role as a worker, you know. I mm -hmm. see my role work as a man to get the job done. Mm. And that satisfies me to see the progress. I am making the progress to Bergonians are making the progress, Trinidadians are making, and to open up the space to a whole new, different type of discussion. I'm not one to sit down and ponder and say, well, okay. yeah, you know, I've done this great. Clap myself, I've okay. done well. Because it's about battle. And, you know, you win, you lose the battle, but you have to win the war. And the war we are in, 
is to be able to give Tobago an easement so Tobago could grow and develop in accordance with the desires of its people. We have desires. As the people in Grenada, um, Barbados, St. Lucia, any Caribbean country, mm -hmm. we have desires. We have dreams of having a Tobago that is Tobago, that reflects our cultural heritage, our, our social um, this, well, it's about socialization as a people. Mm -hmm. We socialize different, even our economy. And so to be told by Trinidad all the time what to do, to be treated as a ward, which we are, mm -hmm. we are a ward, is very unhealthy. And it damages generations to come, to be in this submissive, and I would say um, backward position, not just submissive, but backward. Okay, so you, you're leading me into my next question. Okay, sorry about that. But that's good. That's good, that's vision. good, yeah, because um, one of the reasons why I ask you what I ask you is that I know you're busy, I know that you're launching PDP in Trinidad, but when we look at what's happening here in Tobago, yeah. several people who now it seems as if their support in the THA elections came because they supported you, Watson Duke, as a man, and I don't know if you've seen all of the, you know, people are talking on Facebook <sighs> and so on. There are some people no, who not. feel as if you have abandoned Tobago. As if you've come, you know, you, you convince them to vote for you. Um, they're looking after your leadership. Yes, you did say that you were going to pass the THA to our Chief Secretary, Farley Chavez Augustine. But they seem to, based on what we're seeing on social media, you know, people are doing lives and all yeah. sorts of things. And they're asking, where's Watson? We're looking for that kind of leadership. I don't know if that speaks to anything against our chief secretary or if it's more because they want Watson the man to be here, to be present, to focus on Tobago first. Well, first of all, let me say I have much respect for mm -hmm. my chief secretary, Father Shabazz Augustine. Mm -hmm. We are different insofar as our personality. We are different. Mm -hmm. But he has the ability to govern Tobago. And I've, as a political leader, I've stepped back from the position and I've entrusted that position to him. Mm -hmm. He now has what no other chief secretary have had, which is the amount of persons he has. is 14 mm -hmm. secretaries, myself included, and three uh, councillors, which make it 70, the largest team ever assembled by any THA since 1980. In fact, if you go back to 1969, it's the largest ever. Mm -hmm. And he has the ability to treat with these issues. He has been treating with it. Four months, he has been doing as much as he can, given the restrictions and limited flow of cash, etc. Persons, however, want to hear what's in you make noise in this space. Mm -hmm. And I'm not prepared to make unnecessary noise in the Tobago space. I think the chief secretary is the chief spokesperson, mm -hmm. and let him speak, let the other secretary speak. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking my whole life. But have you, have you, Mr. Duke, heard the cries? Just recently, I think I saw somebody who is a strong supporter of your organization, or at least who supported the PDP yeah. for the THA election. There's several people that shocked many of us that have come out and they've said, listen, um, our chief secretary is perhaps not experienced enough right now. That's what somebody even called outright for the chief secretary to re resign or for you to remove him, that kind of thing. So I suppose what I'm asking you, have you had any inclination at all that maybe you should stop, come, offer some advice? You don't need to be chief we secretary. Meet, we meet every Tuesday. Tomorrow morning we're going to meet at 10 o'clock and I'm going to say what you said to me. Okay. Every Tuesday we meet, we have mm -hmm. our discussions. Um, you know, those persons... They are healthy for democracy. Mm -hmm. Those persons who say enough is enough and all the things that causes you to self-reflect. Okay. It's very important for democracy. We want that. So we don't want to silence that at no time. What we don't want to do is to give them evidence of such. And I think that um, there's no real hard evidence of such. Okay. You know, in leadership, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. In leadership, you're going to have to learn as you go. All right? There's no leader who could just autopilot a country. None. Mm -hmm. None. Not even uh, who? Biden. He's around very long, one of the oldest politicians in America. Mm -hmm. But he cannot autopilot a country. They're going to question him. All right. All right? Not Donald Trump, might and powerful and aggressive as he is. Not George Bush. Not Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. There's no one. Not um, Pandey. Not none of the former leaders. But, but Mr. Duke, Deputy Chief Secretary, yeah. all of these people have 
what seems like solid, competent, technical people behind them. Yeah. Is this something that the PDP has? Is this something that we are not seeing? Is this something that now, based on how things have started? Because all of your secretaries are quite busy. And yeah. personally, I would believe that they're all working in the best interest of Tobago. As you said, we may all make mistakes, that's fine. But continuous mistakes may be problematic. And I think that's what some of the elders, because like I said, some people that you didn't expect to come out and, you know, talk, they are asking questions. Some of them may be a bit harsh, you know, but they're asking questions. Is it that there's a, maybe a council of technical experts, elders, I don't know what you all would call it in the background, not just to support the chief secretary, but all of the secretaries, because the secretaries are young, new to this. And like I said, I don't think any Tobagonian believes that the secretaries, they're, they're you know, really not doing anything deliberately. So now let me take a giant leap into your discussion, mm -hmm. right? As a Deputy Chief Secretary, there are several areas under my portfolio. Mm -hmm. One of the areas is to monitor policies and to evaluate them. Right. Now, all organizations mm -hmm. are controlled or managed by policies. Mm -hmm. You can't just operate an organization based on vibes or you feel this morning, you feel hot, you feel cold, you feel friendly, mm -hmm. you feel, you know, neutral. So those policies are normally formulated by the executive council, mm -hmm. or there may be regulations that exist in the public service commission regulations, something like that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, or found somewhere in law, be it the parliament would have issued policies and its overrides, certain teaching policies, etc. Mm -hmm. We are guided by that. I am to monitor those policies and evaluate them and then report so that action can be taken, whether it's with training, decisive action so far as discipline or reprimand, right. or even an investigation. And if you think, or the public think, mm -hmm. and I'm saying not for the public of Tobago space, mm -hmm. if you think any area, any single area is not functioning well, any single area is not functioning well, or there may be some type of a, um, undercurrent or activities mm -hmm. that lend itself to question the integrity of people, you can write to the Deputy Chief Secretary. My office is currently, it's the next question, mm -hmm. my office is currently <laughs> by Yats Building where sports used to be. Okay. I won't occupy the place So you've last taken week. that building already? You've got well, it. well, it's going to be temporary. Okay. If I'm on to so because it's not the building that's really mm. perfect for is, is any of your staff there are you are you well, there yeah. right now well i'm there right now i mean okay. i don't have much technical staff as yet mm -hmm. but i mean i can do the work mm -hmm. what's in duke is, is a combo mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> almost a one man show you know what i mean <laughs> so i could do the work the person is going to come mm -hmm. but i'm not going to wait and say well i have no director of this i have no technical person of this no i have an administrator right. i have hr staff i have a con staff you know, about, about, when when uh, was this office officially open? When did but you it was, it's not officially open. It, okay. was, it was a stitch in time at Save 9. Okay. Right? We, we, we didn't have all the um, where at all to have the perfect office and the perfect place and the perfect timing. So there was some delay. Mm -hmm. And so the Chief Secretary recognized time is against us and put the need for us to come on stream and handle certain things would have uh, made a, what do you see, a radical move in that sports once operated as a unit by itself right. and community development. So now told sports, okay, we know you have been there for a while, but you need to go across to community development. Mm -hmm. So they went across to community development. Now sports, youth and community development, something like that, right? Right. And um, so I'm now occupying the building with the staff there okay. and with the administrator who was once in sports. Okay. So in the next few weeks, um, the Chief Secretary is going to allocate some money to that vote mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to start hiring police and have interviews going out. I've already spoken to the administrator there. He's a very good administrator. I think he's willing to work. Right. And we're going to change things. We're going to make Tobago what it should be because I have zero tolerance. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Zero tolerance on persons or organizations that does not conform to policies. Mm -hmm. There'll be zero, zero tolerance. I, I have a particular case and I want to bring it here. Mm -hmm. Right? where I wrote to the CEO of um, TRHA. It's mm -hmm. a very serious case. Because people have been coming to me, telling me they feel worn out, they feel abused, especially health sector, right? Coming out of the pandemic for much years. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him for the policies on hours of work, mm -hmm. the policies on vacation, the policies on um, things like, well, vacation leave, mm -hmm. right? The policies on 
if you have to access, um, if you're aggrieved, how do you seek redress? Okay. And a number of things that I'm asking policies on. I wrote to him, I told him, give him one week to submit those policies to me. Mm -hmm. He never submitted in a week. So this, okay, you, you have me curious. And, I, and I, I want to make this point, a significant point I want to make. Because mm -hmm. I want it to be aired in the public. I'm not skylarking at all. He didn't submit the policies at all whatsoever. Mm -hmm. he, nothing he said for the first week. I then write him again. And in my first letter, I told him, oh, look, I'm appointed by the THA to carry out this responsibility. Yeah. If he wanted, he could have asked for information. So I wrote him asking for the policy document. Now, that's, that's, that's why you, you, you're, you're teaching me something here tonight Good. and perhaps several other Tobagonians because I did not know that the Deputy Chief Secretary, Anybody? I mean, you said it earlier on. Because right. my first question is, why didn't you perhaps ask the Chief Secretary to write to Dr. Fate or contact no. Dr. Fate as the Secretary? That is Secretary. long time politics. Uh -huh. Long time politics. And I'll cut to that. So he didn't respond at all. Mm -hmm. So I wrote him again. I said, look, you are engaging in what is called. Um, act of misconduct, all right? Because I've written to you, I've given you time, I told what I want, and you did not do it. Mm -hmm. There's a particular term in um, industrial relations, in mm -hmm. employment law, that's not coming to my mind right now, right? Mm -hmm. That actually what, what he did. And I told him I'm giving you another week again to provide my information because it's needed. Mm -hmm. You know, the Chief Secretary didn't know how much persons would have been affected by these things during the pandemic, didn't get leave, didn't get vacation, with a number of stuff, you know what I mean? Right. I can't listen to all right now. He would be interested in knowing that and how we could address those issues. <clears throat> For the second time, he did not. Okay. Two weeks pass. So, so you're putting Tobago on, no on I, notice? I allow him another week. Mm. So three weeks pass altogether, no response. I then wrote him again. And I said, I'm giving you, well, that time about... 24 hours mm -hmm. in which to tell me why we shouldn't initiate discipline action against you at the executive level. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. He didn't respond on time. But his secretary tried to explain. Right? Tried to explain the position. Saying, well, it's her fault. She had plenty of work to do and things should come to her first before it goes to him and before things mm -hmm. goes out at the past. That's hogwash. Okay. Hogwash. That's the internal politics. That doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. I'm very serious where the business of Tobago is concerned. So I want to, I want to, I want to ask you because this one will take a whole episode of 40 hours. That's right. But, but let me just, let me just clarify it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave it jangled, I don't cut it surgically clean. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now? We went to the executive council with it, mm -hmm. and the chief secretary would have therefore identified one or two, two, two persons who would become the investigator mm -hmm. and investigate the matter because his reliance was on that, you know. Um, that um, he cannot engage any political requests. Uh, this is not a political request. Right, because the policy has <laughs> changed. This and is this not is a political request. This is, is, I am asking for policy. Right. right? And as a public servant or public sector worker, you have a right to give anybody who asks you for policy. Mm -hmm. They can do so under the Freedom of Information Act. They can do so anybody. And you have to give that. That's not secret information. We're asking for names of salaries right. and this kind of stuff. But again, there is a type of dotish behavior that exists mm -hmm. sometimes. I'm not tolerating at all. We tend to beg and Trinidad, mm -hmm. where people believe it's rank. I'm not a rank. Fair I'm enough. not on Fair rank. To beg work must go on. And so I'm saying to you, if persons feel that there are areas where they're not getting justice, mm -hmm. you can come to me. Because at the end of the day, we have to treat our own in a particular way, mm -hmm. in order for you to get results. Now, I suspect people will come to you either way. And for all politicians, mm -hmm. all 14 members of your team, yeah. um, and the councillors, people will go to them. I'm pretty sure that perhaps they are already frustrated and overwhelmed because people are going to come to you, they're going to want jobs, they're going to be looking for food, they're going to be yes, looking yes, for yes, everything. Yes, yes. That's normal, um, that's normal. That's, yeah, they're going to ask some money, and then if you don't get it, you know, there's another thing. But what I wanted to come back to is your role as the Deputy Chief Secretary because you've highlighted one area of your responsibility yeah. that I was not aware of. Can we explore what the, ro the official role of the Office of the... But that's one of the official that's, roles. Right. So what are, the, side role. what are the others? It's very official. What are the others? Well... Because that, that one, just to be clear, just go it over again. Yeah. You're responsible for policy. For the, for the monitoring of policies right. within 
all divisions except the chief secretary division. Mm -hmm. So all divisions are responsible for the monitoring of policies and evaluating those policies. Mm -hmm. So if those policies are not working, then I could recommend and say, look, these policies gotcha. are not working. These policies are causing persons pain, mm -hmm. torture, frustration. Mm -hmm. That's true. So we have a monitoring thing inside. It's the first time that's ever happened within the teacher because we are serious mm -hmm. about performing and not just presentation and chalala, chalala. Okay. We want to work. So that's fall under this next senior person mm -hmm. within Tobago of Press. We have a chief secretary and we deputy chief secretary. The two okay. senior, next senior person responsible for that. And I'm not tolerating nonsense. I'm not tolerating it. I say it here. Right. So all of Tobago will know that Watson Duke is not tolerating nonsense. When I come into that work, mm -hmm. I know friends in it. We're doing the work right because Tobago people at the end of the day mm -hmm. will hold us accountable. Yeah. Well, I think I think you have sufficiently Good. shown all of Trinidad and Tobago what you stand for and the lens that you're willing That's to go right. when people upset what you're trying to achieve. Well, you so right. Let's, thing. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> let's go to the yeah. other um, areas. the other areas of the office of the deputy chief secretary in terms of what the, your office is responsible right. for. The office is also responsible for intergovernmental affairs, mm -hmm. which is the affairs that exist between. Tobago and Trinidad mm -hmm. that are sometimes acrimonious and sometimes um, does not redound to the benefit of Tobagonians. Right. So things like the air bridge and the sea bridge and all this kind of stuff, those are affairs, mm -hmm. intergovernmental affairs. Things like when they come and they even raise the gas price. Mm -hmm. So that affects us across it because our economy is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so anything that affects us, but more paramount of all of that, what is chiefly responsible for is autonomy. Mm -hmm. Intergovernmental affairs, the autonomy granting to be able more and more autonomy. And so that era has not been staffed as yet with technical people, right. but already I'm advancing it because I recognize that whether it is PNM or UNC in Trinidad, the results will be the same in so far as our autonomy. Mm -hmm. Games and more games and more games. And they will give us a half pick duck, quarter pick duck, or sometimes no duck, only mm -hmm. feathers. We are fed up, we are tired of those games. Mm -hmm. and so I have decided as the first Tobago political organi base organization to now mm -hmm. advance against them. Nobody advance against the PNM, you know. Right. People are running from the PNM and defend. But I, Watson Solomon Duke with the PDP, mm -hmm. went to Trinidad, form a team down there, mm -hmm. proper team in place. And we are now advancing against the PNM. And I've said it clear. Mm -hmm. Part of it is to free the rank and file, free the ordinary man in China who's oppressed by a dictator, and to grant Tobago its right to be treated as an equal partner in Trinidad because legally, and Tobagoans need to understand this, legally, we are not equal to Trinidad. That's legally. That's official. We are not equal. We are a ward. We are um, someone that Trinidad must take care of mm -hmm. legally. This is why they give us a certain amount of money what a fee we should have. Mm -hmm. This is why they also tell, if you want to borrow money, come and say, pretty please, can I get some money, please? And I say, okay, none for you. So, so just as an aside here, mm -hmm. um, is it because the office of the Deputy Chief Secretary was not yet officially ready on the THA business yeah. that you decided to strategically move ahead um, with the PDP office there, which is the political entity yeah. and not the THA? Um, because the two go hand in hand? No, I suppose no, no. some of us I, I, I think you're that asking a double barrel question. I'm not sure what's mm. the intent. No, but because I mean, what you said, yeah. in terms of the responsibility of the office of the Deputy Chief Secretary, part of it is the autonomy, yeah. which is advancing, as well as the intra governmental yeah, intra affairs. affairs yeah. Right? Um, if I'm not mistaken on Monday, Monday, I don't have the paper with me, but one of the things was setting up the an office of the Deputy yes. Chief Secretary in Trinidad. Definitely, definitely. Right, so for me... I don't know if anybody has thought that. I expected to see that happen, but then the office wasn't officially ready, and we saw the PDP yes. move ahead. So that's what I'm asking you. If like I say, I'm a one man show you. I don't want to <laughs> in a full, full team. If the work has to be done according to what you do, the work will be done. Oh, Mr. Duke, I right? really hope that you get a vacation in will, will be done. So, mm -hmm. I mean, not have an office, but mm -hmm. recognize the need for us to advance against our, right. our, our, our what is it, our... Um, but those in Trinidad, the government in Trinidad, mm -hmm. advance and to push them back, I eventually set up the PDP office and continue the political work. Right. But more than that, all is one. Because Tobago issues are political issue. Mm -hmm. It's not an academic issue. People have figured out 
what the solution is already. Mm -hmm. The solution is known. But it's a political one, one of will, one of keeping the people in control and not giving them more than enough. At least they get full and they forget who their master is. Mm. So we are going pretty well with that. The office, based on my conversation, Chief Secretary, mm. has been, is going to be set up very shortly. Right. He has been just given instructions that they acquire the office and um, steps be taken to immediately do what um, needs to be done. To get it All done. right. So right? We've, we've got to cut and take a break. And I've got to say, um, you know, you've made amazing strides. I don't think anybody can deny that. So for all Tobagoians listening, you're, you're hearing from our Deputy Chief Secretary and political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots, Watson Duke, about the, his vision, his vision for Tobago, how it relates to what's happening in Trinidad, and more so the, the role and function of the Office of the Deputy Political, the Deputy Chief Secretary of the THE. When we come back, we will continue the discussion. We're also going to talk about his representation as an assemblyman. And more, stay with us. You're viewing for the hour. Tobago Glass Supplies has been a leading name for over 37 years in the glass and aluminum market in Tobago. We provide an extensive range of high quality innovative aluminum and glass products for commercial and residential use. Competitive prices with superior and professional services by committed employees who are guided by rigid quality standards. Tobago Glass Supply specializes in the manufacture and installation of glass and aluminum products that are essential to today's homeowners and the business environment. We are engaged in marketing, sales and installation of a variety of products. These ranges from windows and doors to necessities such as mirrors for homes and vehicles designed and manufactured in-house or imported. Rest easy at American stores up to 20% off. Outstanding discounts on selected Serta, Sealy, and Therapeutic mattress brands. Check us out today at American Stores, where we make quality living affordable. Our national borders, our first step to security, but a possible access point for guns, drugs, crime. If it does not look right, do the right thing. Call Crime Stoppers anonymously. 800 8477. Report possible border crime. Are you looking for that all in one shopping experience? Then look no more. Visit Lamb's Best Mart for your grocery items, fruits and vegetables, drinks, home items, stationery, gift items, hampers, shopping gift cards, toiletries, small hardware items, and much more. We provide order and pickup service, even delivery to your door. We are your friendly community supermarket. Check us out today at Lamb's Best Mart located at 22 Daniel Trace Canby or visit us on social media at Lamb's Best Mart. with us. If you're now joining us, you're viewing For the Hour. I am Glendora Lashley and I have with me For the Hour the political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots and the Deputy Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Mr. Watson Solomon Duke. We're having a discussion on all things related to his vision, his historical move, 
fresh off a successful launch in Trinidad yesterday of the PDP. Um, but we're keeping things to Tobago because, of course, as I said, if you want to catch up with what happened in Trinidad yesterday, just go back to the Tobago Updates right. Facebook page or the website. They were there. They were live for more than four hours. You will get all of that in terms of the launch. Tonight we're talking, we're having an exclusive discussion with our Deputy Chief Secretary on matters more relating to Tobago. And so, Mr. Duke, before we went to the break, you explained some of the areas yeah. that are under your purview as Deputy Chief Secretary, and there's some more. So exactly. let's get into the others. Right. Diaspora Relations mm -hmm. Department falls under Deputy Chief Secretary. What is Diaspora Relations Department? Mm -hmm. It's that department that says, while we have 60,000 persons living on the island of Tobago's original birth, mm -hmm. we have about over 300,000 plus persons of that diaspora mm -hmm. live in Trinidad. For example, my grandfather had about eight children, nine children. Mm -hmm. I think um, seven of them went to live in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. They have children, plenty of children down there. Some more females, their name change to different things, but they are my first cousins. Right. Right? They uh, have Tobago diaspora with them. Mm -hmm. so they were born here originally. They came from here. So throughout Tr Trinidad and the Caribbean and the wider world, mm -hmm. there are Tobagonians with, there are persons rather with the Tobagonian heritage within them. Right. The genes, the DNA within them. And so this is my responsibility under the THA to ensure that those persons Mm -hmm. are somewhat um, um, unified on a particular platform right. that we can communicate, we can benefit from their, their, uh, would say, say their development in life or their mm -hmm. education or their, or, or their business, they have, the expertise they have. Mm -hmm. You know, we can benefit from them, that relationship. I don't want to say money-wise, but from whatever they have, we can benefit and they can benefit from us. Mm -hmm. So you want to create a win-win situation in diaspora. Mm -hmm. Someone who has, is from the diaspora, they would be able to access things like housing, lands, and different things because they're Tobagonians. Right. Once we can prove that, mm -hmm. they can access and there will be some benefit for them. That's a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. Some benefit. So we don't want to see Tobago for just those who are living here. Mm -hmm. We're calling those persons who are outside of Tobago. He's not Tobagonian. Mm -hmm. No, they may not even speak the language. My brother, he's living in Mexico. He has two sons. They all speak perfect Spanish. No English. Mm -hmm. Right? They're born there. I haven't even been here to Trinidad and Tobago. Right. But they have Tobago diaspora within them. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to gather all of those pieces mm -hmm. together and say, look, this is Tobago. How could you help us build a better Tobago? Right. Child by child, family by family, village by village. How could you help us? And how could we help you to understand your heritage and where you come from? Okay. That's, that's quite noble. And given that we, we need all the extra resources that we can get, yeah. hopefully that will work out. Now, Definitely. one um, very important area under the Office of the Deputy Chief Secretary is foreign direct investment. That's right. I'm coming to that. And you made, <laughs> you made headlines nationally um, in your Dubai trip when you announced to the world yeah. and to many Tobagonians um, what the plan for the city of Roxo Roxborough would look like. Yeah. Because many of us heard you, you've been saying city of Roxborough forever. Yes, well, right? I but I think for the, it's the first time that people saw a plan. Some people were taken aback, some people were surprised. I saw some people asking whether or not there was consultation about that. Tell us about foreign direct investment and the, the Dubai trip as it relates to that. Right, well, I was um, in Dubai representing the Chief Secretary, mm -hmm. right? And I think they had some world um, expo where different nations of the world are patching expo village right. it's permanent where um, we're displaying different things and looking for business etc mm -hmm. so going up there I understood that what the Trinidad folks would have wanted is mm -hmm. for the PM Trinidad folks would have wanted is for us to go up there and recite the same thing we have coral reef have a big green coral you know mm -hmm. and you have more species of bird more square miles and talk the same chalala chalala. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get 10 years tax free, this, that. But in order to speak to the international community, you have to speak to them about a plan that makes money. You just can't tell them there's opportunity to invest in computer, to invest in this and that. They don't want to hear that. Right. You have to make it seductive, make it look sexy for them, mm -hmm. make them want to watch, make them even want to get involved. And so, I've been going up there, 
what we created, which I've been creating, I've been speaking to the people of Rockbo since January, since we came into power, mm -hmm. about the city, etc. It's for quite a while. And so I had designed that. And it was something to say, we are going to create a shift in paradigm. Mm -hmm. And to begin a conversation, if you want to invest, you can invest mm -hmm. in either of these things. Mm -hmm. And I must say to you, it was well received. It was well received by the audience who were there as I spoke. Mm -hmm. Usual was in Duke style. They came to the edge of their seat. Mm -hmm. I said the blueprint of the green economy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you speak green economy, what you're simply saying to the United Nations and the Sustainable Development Goals and um, to the Paris Treaty and the Climate Change right. um, Agreement and so on, is that I want some of that funding you have available mm -hmm. for climate control. I want some of that funding you have available for Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. And Sustainable Development Goals talk about creating employment, talk about a number of other issues to reduce and stuff and stuff. So I make sure I tap all that into the development plan. Mm -hmm. Because the pitch was to persons who are funding stuff and persons who want to engage. But I must admit to you, we are far way off mm -hmm. in Tobago insofar as attracting foreign direct investment. Right. Because what we need is a cocktail of legislation that says to foreigners, Look, if you come into my country, right, you do not have to get a license from Trinidad mm -hmm. to purchase over five acres of land, mm -hmm. right? You can purchase that and you can own that. That license will be granted by to be House of Assembly. We need to have that permission at least. We're not saying remove the license, mm -hmm. but give the power to the to be House of Assembly, who must be able to manage mm -hmm. its own economic space. And that's why I said earlier, we're different from Trinidad. Right. Because Trinidad manages its own space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whosoever is the power down there, they don't get the supervision from the Queen and say, Queen, could we get this? They do it. But we must now ask, pretty please, a man want to invest in seven acres of land, could we please have permission mm -hmm. to grant him? And if Trinidad government is different from the Tobago government and their vision for Tobago is different, we're gonna have back and out. So let me ask you let me ask you this then. Um, and I, I want to be a little mischievous as well. Please be. The House of Assembly, mm -hmm. right, um, in terms of the, the chamber, plenary sittings and mm -hmm. so on. Um, I saw somebody posted today that you were upset from majority of them. Maybe you were there <laughs> once. But I'm bringing that up. I have, to, yeah, I, tell yeah. you, I have to tease you a little bit. But I'm bringing that up to say, can we expect that perhaps the first motion or one of the early ones that you would take to the House would be to try and adjust the, um, the legislation to positively affect or influence that kind of change that we could get the foreign direct investment that you're talking about. Now, for Tobagonians who pay attention to legislative matters, you know that the THA is not a lawmaking body. Um, they go in there and they toss around policy. It's been like that forever. But based on what our Deputy Chief Secretary is about um, and his role as political leader and advocating in Trinidad, can we see that go through, that bit of, that motion go through the THA, sent to Trinidad if you all pass it here, agree to it here, and then you further advocate for legislative changes? Yes, and I think you have said it well, because my role is to keep the THA busy. And when we get busy here, mm -hmm. they won't have time to sit on an office and look pretty, you know. They'll be preparing, have speech writers writing speech for them, preparing how to defend things, how to push legislations forward. Mm -hmm. Because we need to attack every single piece of legislation in Trinidad that affects our right towards autonomy in Tobago. So it's not just foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. We need to assert ourselves in the political landscape mm -hmm. where the PNM is concerned in Trinidad. And to do that, that uh, intergovernmental affairs department with the staff of the lawyers, research, mm -hmm. drafters of bills, etc. And so we will somewhat be responsible also to, I think, for the legislative um, agenda for the year. Okay. So we have to meet almost every week in the parliament because this is serious business. Right. Running a country is not just old talkers and say, all right, I pass a month of money. So mm -hmm. it's serious business. We must show that we are ready for that transition. You know that there are several people, um, particularly those people with stronger historical context and who were wrong, you know, well before, yeah. at least my time, yeah. that they sort of expected from you and um, Chief Secretary Farley, Chavez yeah. Augustine, uh -huh. to, I would say, break the law, be revolutionary. Because you started a movement that 
called people to be revolutionary. And I saw at least two people ask about, you know, just, just do certain things. Yes, it's breaking the law. I suppose they, they expect you all to go that route. Yeah. Um, to fight for Tobago to get what many feel Tobago deserves. It's another conversation. But how do you feel about doing those radical things now that well, we are, we are, we, we are, we are, mm -hmm. we are. But this is my department. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I will say responsible for, for setting leading that, that charge. Leading that okay. charge, and that is still being set up. That's right, set up. So okay. once that is done, it's going to be totally different. And this no. is why perhaps those of the PM in that doesn't want the office to be set up. Mm -hmm. Not that they have control over it, but it doesn't want the office to be set to up. Be set. Fair enough. Let me ask you another question. With respect to the people here, and I suppose we can come into um, representation a bit, there are several people who feel as if things are not moving fast enough, right? People are all over the place asking questions. You just said in your own words there, when things really get going, the momentum will start. Do you feel as if there's a need to perhaps try to explain? And I mean, being in the media, you could talk and talk and talk. Yeah. Some people just won't get it. Right, but do you feel as if there's a need for you, because many people look to you, um, the organization, to explain how the THA works and explain to some people that perhaps the expectations that they had um, cannot happen right away. And a simple thing is something like getting jobs. There are several people complaining about being unemployed or being overlooked because somebody else, you know, get a bly or whatever. To my mind, and I may be wrong, it seems as if there's the lack of understanding that even though you are the chief secretary mm -hmm. or the deputy chief secretary, there are only so many people you can hire at, at a time. So things like those, do you feel as if there's need for education and sensitization around that? So people know that you're not deliberately ignoring them, at least I hope not, but just that things have to take time? It's a good question, but it's also a question that uses a plain answer. These people have a right to be upset. Mm -hmm. They have a right to complain. Mm -hmm. right? But where are the jobs? And we shouldn't silence them. Let them make noise. Mm -hmm. We cannot talk someone into accepting hunger. Mm -hmm. We can't talk someone into accepting unemployment. There's not no kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. You could tell someone who's qualified, who wants to work, mm -hmm. well, well, I don't mind, you know, they will accept that. Mm -hmm. Unless we create what is called a universal basic income. And allow me to step back. Mm -hmm. That Dubai plan, though it is not fully completed as yet, or presented, I would say, as yet, is a plan that has within it what we call a sovereign wealth fund for all of Tobagoians. Mm -hmm. When are you hear me explain that plan, you will see where the foreign money is invested mm -hmm. and the money is generated from those um, businesses mm -hmm. would allow every single Tobagoian, every single Tobagoian mm -hmm. to receive a certain wealth. Mm -hmm. Sovereign, from what's called Sovereign Wealth Fund. You'll find in those outer countries out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are saying it's time that Tobago begin to plan for a deal like this. Because we never had sufficient to plan for deals and because we bad spending money, mm -hmm. we are now in a position where we have nothing. We don't want it to happen. Let them complain. Their complaints will drive us to do better. But I am not about meantime, restricting people. It's, it's not restricting them, Deputy Chief Secretary. Yeah. It's not restricting them at all. It's making people understand that perhaps X... But there's nothing to understand. That, you know. You're hungry. A, it, you're belly full. Mm -hmm. And you tell me understand but food coming? It's not a matter of understanding. <laughs> food coming is understanding that it just not have no food. Now, you said something. I heard you on an on a interview in Trinidad, yeah. um, and they asked you about crime. And you said something that really stuck with me because it's, it's the truth. In terms of, yes, you need to understand the background workings of why people get into crime right. in the first place. Yeah. And it's a similar thing here. If we are not careful, when people have these expectations, and they're well within their right to have the expectations, right. that's why I'm saying if you feel that there's a need to sensitize people, because let's face it, Deputy Chief Secretary, several people in this space, including some of the employees themselves, just don't understand how the THA works. So you think the money people, there to spend? I said the Where's people the money? I said the people, the THA has a budget. Mm -hmm. And the THA employs a certain amount of people with that budget. Now, if we are firing people en masse, there will be employment. <laughs> but those people we are firing are also Tobagoians. Right. They have families too. Mm -hmm. 
So there's no sense in firing people en masse without reason, mm -hmm. just because you feel they may belong to the other side. But the argument will them. be you fire them, but right. who get in? And who get who in? Get so we job? can't do that. We can't fire some to replace some. Mm -hmm. But what we have to do is to get more money to come in. Mm -hmm. So when the more money come in now, we can then create more jobs. Right. There are plenty of vacancies in Tobago, plenty of vacancies. Now, this I know from my training mm -hmm. that monies are assigned to every vacancy, but apparently they are not doing nothing in Tobago. So there are vacancies, but there are no money assigned to those vacancies mm -hmm. to fill those vacancies. So Tobago is lagging behind, and this is part of the problem that I am equipped with myself, now we we'll have an office right. with the right type of people, and we need to be positioning to another fight that fight on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We can't be finding one place and fly back up every day. Do you to see fix that. do you see any interim options at all? You are a guy grassroots on the ground. You I mean you double at all levels. Yeah. But fundamentally, the reason you got that massive support is because you identify with the man on the of ground. Right? And we all know that. You you're right. When you're hungry, you need food. Right? If I have to pay my rent, I need to pay my yeah, rent. But if up. you don't have no money to give me, what do we do while we wait on the, 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 the pitch that went to Dubai? What do we do while we wait on you getting so your, your other investments? This is what we have to do now, right? Set up the office of the Deputy Chief Secretary quickly. Mm -hmm. Give me the right personnel with which I can carry out my job and watch me work. All right. Well, Watch, remember, remember, mm -hmm. I have gotten 14% for the workers in the PSC. When oil price moved from $80 to $40 a barrel, mm -hmm. when it was $80, they offered us 9% and said so that's all they can do. When it dropped to 40 I moved it from 9% to 14%. Mm -hmm. Remember, I've never built a house, but I've delivered over 300 homes, HEC home built already, mm -hmm. that they were supposed to give away. I said, give me them house. Eh? And I give them away to my members. All right. right? All right. So you have to All allow right. me now to get more money mm -hmm. into the country under the whole interministerial or uh, intergovernmental affairs. All of the things that are under the office of the chief, deputy chief. Yeah. Secretary. So it's one thing for the finance secretary to go down and ask for more money. Mm -hmm. So next thing now, allocate for, the money for the um, deputy chief mm -hmm. to go and say, hey, that money asked for, we need that money. Okay. And then therefore manage the relationship. Mm -hmm. He does the asking. But the arguments for the money, mm -hmm. apart after he laid it there, mm -hmm. is supposed to come from a deputy chief. So it's like, it's a fight. He goes and he puts that down there, he steps back. Right. And then I stand, step forward, mm -hmm. engage Trinidad, and then bring right. the thing to fruition. So Tobagonians, you heard it from the deputy chief secretary. He's saying, once the office is set up, and set up quickly with the right personnel, he will do what he's accustomed to doing to make sure that we get some relief on this island. Now, before we go, we can't have a conversation with you and not talk about the people that put you in the THA. Yeah. And this is your um, THA constituency. constituency. Exactly. So let's talk about the people. Talk, talk to your people. What's been happening there? Have you been making sure that those people are happy or they're losing here to Trinidad? Some pe I, I tell you, there are people come. I, I see the complaints. Eh? So you have to forgive me. As a media person, right. you see all the complaints. Again, they say you, you throw them away and they go in Trinidad. Again, they are right to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I must do a balancing act. Right. And you have to tell me, say, hey, you're going too, too much to the left. Come back to the right. Okay. I do not blame anyone for jumping on their Facebook post and see what they have to say. I'm not angry with any of them. See, that's what it takes to be politically mature. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to take criticism. Sometimes criticism that may come in the form of insult or derogatory language or language that questions your ability. Mm -hmm. But you have to check on yourself. Self-reflection is good. But I can tell you, Last week, Tuesday, I was at Roxbury, I met the people. And whenever I meet people on a Tuesday, I feed them. Mm -hmm. I ensure when they come, I go late. So I come in the evening time, mm -hmm. so they might leave midnight. Mm -hmm. right? I think the chief secretary also does the same thing too. He meets he meet, he meet his people on yes, a Tuesday I've also. Seen, I've seen the chief right? secretary post about being there after right? midnight and so, so on. So, I mean, I'm there, but I, 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 don't, yeah. I, mean, I don't post really, but I mean, yeah. I'm there. And, I mean, what is not present, and I'm working on it, mm -hmm. is the amount of time I had to be on the streets of Roxbury. <laughs> Correct. Right? It's Correct. not there again. Because, Correct. I mean, one of the faces, I'm looking for a bigger weapon now to fight. Mm -hmm. Right? And if I'm fighting, I have, it will take time for me to be in Trinidad, mm -hmm. take time for me to do my work, mm -hmm. and I just something well, you know, not to give. You, you know, Deputy Chief. So I still make time now and then mm -hmm. to still drive and shake a hand, mm -hmm. but I can't do it as often. So I do it, mm -hmm. but not as often. Before, I will be there every single week, mm -hmm. two, three times a week. Yes. That's all I have to do. But now, 
Remember, we're here. But how, how do you explain to them? Because, again, one of the things about this whole PDP movement is that it's centered a lot around you. Yeah. And even now, the chief secretary is the chief secretary. He has his job. People are looking at him do his job. He's trying his best, as far as we are all aware. Right? So he's, he's there busy. Yes, yeah. he has a, um, a constituency as well, but he's there. For some reason, the man that is Watson <laughs> Duke still overshadows a lot of what is happening. So you, even for though, example... Even, even though I'm quiet? Yeah, but you're... <laughs> and that's, what I'm, that's why I started off the way I started off, because I'm saying um, people were... From some of the complaints that have come up in the media, that people yeah. were... They were basically asking, where's Watson? Where is Watson? Why is Watson in Trinidad? Nobody made the connection that, okay, if Watson is in Tobago without the office, what exactly are you expecting him to do? Walk around and shake your hand and laugh with everybody? But Tobago has a culture by default where we like to see people. Now, in your case, it's not just Roxborough, Argyle, or whatever the new constituency is called. The whole country. <laughs> people want to see you in Mariah. They want to see you in Boku. They want to see you in Mount Pleasant. Those guys that you went by, um, yeah. I think, in Mount Pleasant. Yeah. If you don't go back there... I visited them about two weeks ago. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you have to stretch yourself thin. Very but true. from what you are saying here, I am concerned about how far can you push yourself with doing all that you're doing Well, this is my life work, you know I mean? I don't complain. I, I, I like the challenge. and mm. I'm giving it as much as I can, you know what I mean? My day is very, very, very packed. No. But I love it because putting a smile on someone's face who was at once at the front of me is the greatest payback for the hard work. And I'm being able to put smiles on faces. And I like the pressure because it's an indication that persons are not happy. And it causes you to think and to think outside the box mm -hmm. and to come up with novel solutions. Right. It's not something that makes me angry or frustrated. Right. When people complain, you see, it's a legitimate complaint. So I tend to walk around when I can. You have you have more than ten years experience at this. You know they say it takes well, about well, ten yeah, thousand hours to master some, something. Some very much settled, <laughs> so I must say. You have what I'm you doing. understand very it. You settled. understand it because it's it's not easy. We all no, know it's, it's not, not easy. easy. For a newcomer, Precisely. you'll be pulling out your ears. You'll be Precisely. angry. Yeah. You'll be hating people. You'll be stop talking to people. But yeah. it's never happened in my life. Okay. You know? All right. All right. Well, unfortunately. Time, time, yes. time, time. You know, so we, we're enjoying this conversation. Okay. I want to go, I want to kind of go. Uh, before we leave, let me just ask you about your family. Um, and I'm asking this in the context, not to be fast and mind your business. It's public but life. It's also part of the sacrifice. Yes. I've only seen your wife on social media and some of your children, if that's all the children that you have on social media. Well, I don't think right? so. Well, <laughs> <laughs> again, I don't know. I've just seen a few of them. And I, I always wonder, you know, I suppose they, they are accustomed to it. But now we we are you we are you are tight. a man of the of the country. We are tighter than a gun. Mm. You know what I mean? So let me tell you when I came home today, I was out today trying to tap it ends what happened yesterday, right. telling people thanks, paying a few people. When I got home about uh half past three today, mm -hmm. my wife put my food, I sat down, my daughter was talking to me, telling mm -hmm. me what's going on in the Facebook, what's going on here. So we interacted. My son came down with Lyman, you know, they went, they took a bath, mm -hmm. you know. I fell asleep, I got back up, I reckon as I have to be in the airport. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's never enough time for them. Right. But they understand what I'm doing. They right. understand that if I don't do it, who will do it? Mm -hmm. We can't allow the monsters to take over. Mm -hmm. There must be some good people good at some place. Mm -hmm. And it's better a good people, a good person rather, sacrifice and get to the top mm -hmm. than a bad person walk inside there because no good person wants it. And so mm -hmm. they, they, I consider them, they are the heroes in my life. Right. Stress-free. My daughter has just finished her first degree mm -hmm. in law, 20 years old. She's now going to do the master's okay, in, um, congratulations to her. in cyber law. Mm -hmm. All right, she has gotten to with the George Washington University. Mm -hmm. and my, my children are doing good. You know, my wife is doing well, very supportive. Mm -hmm. I call her the woman of steel mm -hmm. you know, because she definitely had to be strong to deal with what's on, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, she's very much, very much mm -hmm. balanced, a very balancing act, and I must say mm -hmm. that um, if it wasn't for them, you know, we couldn't make it this far. I would just forget everything else and just chill out and be a little man in the corner. Mm -hmm. I could be a big man because they allow me to be a bigger person and Tobago could have me right. because of them. So I see Tobago much respect after I'm holiday. Mm -hmm. That is them. The day it begins to affect them in a serious way, I just had a call shop, you know what I mean? Okay. Because I, I'm married for life. There's no divorce. Now we are gang. Mm -hmm. you know, she could do nothing wrong. My children could do nothing wrong for me. I could do nothing wrong for them. That's how we stay very tight. That's how the African family should stay. Right. The black man and his family should be inseparable. And we have to 
Let nobody, nothing at all separate us. Back up each other once you're doing something positive, something productive, something that people could benefit from. We ought to support each other, and they have done that. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Now, you touched on one thing that I'll ask you to address before we go, because yeah. I, I, during the campaign, I had particularly liked um, this discourse by the now Chief Secretary. Um, I saw on two occasions or more, he made a call for black men and black boys, you know, to really focus on family, focus on love, focus on positivity, focus on being home, bringing the family together. Although we are a majority African society yeah. in Tobago, um, and even if you look at our East Indian brothers and sisters in Tobago, we're all one. That's right. But you can notice, for the most part, the difference in the family structure. Now, there's a whole history behind that. Yes. But you just spoke about the black man. And so I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit more about that. Because it's important, and I think I said this to you well before this election already. Um, I have seen young men follow you. I've seen young men that I care about follow you. One of them jump in the sea when you swim to Trinidad <laughs> behind you. And the thing shocked me. It, it shocked me, Deputy Chief Secretary, because I did not expect these are guys that wouldn't normally go on these kinds of things. You know, they, they don't get involved in politics. And so that speaks to the influence that you have as a man, as a person. When we look at you, all other things aside, you have your family there. Scandal, whatever, you have your family there. Right? So you represent one of those black men who has a family and trying your hardest, I yeah. suppose, to keep it together. So we've got to talk to our black men, in Tobago especially, about the role of being a strong black man. I am a female, I can't tell you. And that's, and that's, and that's very important. That's so very talk important. about very that. Important. You see, we have to understand that if you destroy the black family, mm -hmm. you destroy the black man. And if the black man understands that, he will protect his family, not just with food and shelter, but I love. Mm -hmm. See, when I reach home, I'm king in my house. I'm king. My wife takes care of me, and she's queen. Mm -hmm. My daughter, my son, I beg them all the time. Talk about love, physical love. Mm -hmm. My daughter kiss me all the time. Oh, daddy. She wants to lie down. She's 20 years old. Mm -hmm. But my son, daddy, I love you. And mm -hmm. I tell them I love them openly. Nothing is wrong with expressing love. Right. We grew up in a time when, when, when black people used to be aggressive. Well, I said, oh, well, you know, our country in Tobago here, aggressive and authorit authoritative. Mm -hmm. But that's not it. I told them to be soft. So people feel like I, that I'm an aggressive man at all, but I don't shout to my wife, you know. Mm -hmm. I never raise my voice to my wife, you know. No, 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 no. Right. We, we, we just school. And she's not in country because she's the boss. No. Mm -hmm. But I make her the boss at home. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to give respect to our females within the home, they play a particular role. As men, we have to learn to submit, being big and strong and being bad. No, 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 no. If my wife must do go up, if me to come here tonight, I'd ask my wife and I say, babes, I have a shoot tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I say, what do you think? He said, oh gosh, again, Watson. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, I want life, Sean. I work in the morning right. to be able to take up. She said, go on, go on, go on. So I get permission. She said, nah. But that call, I say, I can't make it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a balance. Right. Well, yeah. I could say, girl, hush your mouth, eh? mm -hmm. I go on here. Mm -hmm. There is a balance. Mm -hmm. And as black Tobagonians, we have to understand what it means to preserve family. You have to let the wife become a winner. She has to win in some things. And the children, they must feel as part of this. My wife, my children, we sit down, we laugh, we talk. As a matter of fact, we went on a little vacation recently. And though we had money to rent two rooms, we went to one room with two beds. Mm -hmm. We call that camping. Mm -hmm. So we like, we'd be side by side, we share the bed each, right. and we sleep. Sometimes my daughter and I are coming on the step and I said, I said, let me lie on the block tonight. Mm -hmm. And I sit on the step and she's studying and she come out of her room, she open the door. And we're talking. I said, see block, we lie on the block here. She said, daddy, you lie on the block tonight? So to find a way, do your time is small to make it intense, make it laughable, make it funny, mm -hmm. you know, and keep it tight. And that's how we had to keep it. That's scabby. Hey, watch out, moving up. Right. You have to get down to people. So my time with them is very short, but it's very intense. Okay. Very intense. Gotcha. And, and I suppose for people who are into business and need read leadership books, etc., that's something they always say. Yeah. Particularly for the men, your time may be short, but make it valuable. Yeah, make it intense. Yeah. Make, make, it, make intense. it valuable. And while we sound like if we're just talking about family, for people who understand economically what we're trying to achieve in Tobago and what this PDP administration has to try and make happen for us. It's economic stability, sustainable development with a positive vibes.
right? And that's the point of me asking the Deputy yeah. Chief Secretary to speak to the men because you guys are extremely important. important. Yeah. And family is the foundation of wealth and legacy. Yes. And so it's important to make sure you, you, know, you pay attention to that. Deputy Chief Secretary, what are your closing words before we... Wrap up here. Well, simply, to be I love all you, and I love all your body, right? I mean, I'm back and forth, but know this. I love you, Tobago. All right, and that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you very much for viewing for the hour. I am Glendora Lashley. I am very thankful to our Deputy Chief Secretary, political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots, Watson Solomon Duke, for joining me for the hour. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.